Hello again from Sprott Money News, SprottMoney.com. Welcome to the month of August, 2023. Oh my goodness, dog days of summer, wrapping up summer 2023, getting ready for the back third of the year, which is gonna be volatile and interesting, no doubt about that. First up here in August is your monthly precious metals projections call with our friend Chris Vermeulen of the TechnicalTraders.com. Let's get after it, Chris. Nice to see you, my friend. Hey, good to see you, Craig. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, uh, again, just a reminder before we get going, this is all comes to you courtesy of Sprott Money. Give them a like or a subscribe on whatever channel you're watching, please. But also keep in mind the biggest sale of the year at Sprott Money, as Chris has put on the screen here, the Sprott Money Summer Sale began last month and continues, as you can see, until August the 25th. Great deals on all sorts of bullion products at Sprott Money. Uh, and the great deals obviously would continue as the year goes along too. So check out the webpage. Also, you might just give them a call. The number's right there at the top of the page, 888-861-0775. Chris, it has been an interesting month um, as we were just discussing. A lot has changed, but a lot hasn't changed mm -hmm. since the last time we spoke. But you pick up on the subtleties of things. And one of the things I want to make sure we cover is the bond market massive sell-off in bonds, particularly uh, last week as July ended and August began. Uh, long end of the curve primarily. The short end didn't doing much. But the long end is really starting to back up. That 10-year note got up near 420. The long bond got up over 430. You can see this uh, in that TLT ETF, which I know a lot of active traders use as a proxy for the bond market. So let's take a look at it. Chris, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, the bond market's definitely been uh, struggling. And is the, if the Fed's not, if the Fed's going to keep raising rates or holding them, the bond market is, is going to struggle for a while. And there's really been this threshold level right down near these lows here uh, that bonds have been kind of bouncing on. The, the, the futures market has been bouncing on this even closer. And we started to break down last week. We started to break this level and we're coming down to these 2022 lows, which... I mean, you know, for the average investor, uh, you know, the invest the average investor's got, you know, 40 to 70% of their portfolio in bonds if they're with like a, an advisor style, style strategy with the buy and hold. And we're coming back down to these 2022 lows that is a pretty severe level. So when we see bonds sell off like in the past two weeks, like we have, this is putting a lot more pressure on the average investor. Uh, you know, the stock market's doing pretty well and holding up, but the bond market is just gutting the portfolio of the average person who's just holding bonds. And we're back down to these threshold levels where uh, the bond investors are seeing a lot of damage to their portfolio and they're starting to panic. I think we can see some volume, big selling volume going on in the, in the bond market, in the um, ETF here. And um you know, I think bonds are going to have an, a tremendous move eventually when rates start to go down. But when is that going to happen? I'm not sure. But look at the sell-off in the bond yeah. market. It is just floundering. And it could continue to hit new multi-year lows uh, potentially over the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, for, for, you know, depending on what happens here. So it's definitely a powerhouse in terms of the what uh, investors' portfolios are doing. This has got a lot of weight. It's a pretty boring asset to follow, but man, it's a heavy weight in a lot of portfolios and it does a lot more damage than people think. Yeah. You know, uh, higher interest rates playing heck with the economy, uh, the balance sheet of the U.S. government, uh, all that sort of stuff. I mean, if I put on my CRISPR Mullen uh, mask for a minute, I'm going to look a lot better, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm also going to point out what you would say. You'd say, hey, look at these bear flags on this chart. If you pull that baby out, yeah, uh, you'd say, oh, there's a little bear flag in uh, uh, late 2021 and then in down and then another little mini flag. And then that's all this is, is a flag too, Chris. Hey, look, I don't know if the U.S. can afford higher rates, but who knows if they'll get a chance to bounce. That level, that double bottom from last year, man, if that gets taken out, yeah, uh, how much further could TLT go down? I mean, can you extend this chart back even further? Uh, yeah, we can. We could go back in time and and look at where some some oh, levels are. I mean, we're going way back in time here. <laughs> we we'd be probably looking somewhere down around eighty eight. Right now, it's at ninety five. So that's a pretty big haircut uh, in terms of the bond market. 
Uh, it would probably be yeah. some capitulation low. It'd probably be like a big spike down and and, and sharp reversal. But uh, yeah, there's, there's still quite a bit of downside potential. We can even look at this more recent price action and use uh, like a Fibonacci yeah. extension, which is what I really like to look at. Uh, we can, you go from the high, you take the sell off to the low, and then you go up to this high and you can carry that forward. And that'll give you an idea of, of where price could go. Right now it's trading at around 96, 95. It could fall, you know, another almost 15%, uh, which brings us down to about 81. If that was, if that was to actually continue this, this current move here. So that's a lot of pain, a uh, big yeah. sell off in the bond market. I mean, I don't know what that will bring the whole bond market TLT down uh, from the highs. It's probably going to be somewhere in the 60%. Uh, level yeah it'd be 50 55 percent sell-off in the bond market which is probably one of the biggest ones we've ever seen <laughs> yeah good heavens that uh that level of tlt would correspond to something north of five percent in the 10-year note and certainly the the long bond that would take mortgage rates up over eight uh wow what's that all right one last look at this chart zoom and in those, again those interest forward. rates you just said though those are kind of the norm it's just we've well been yeah We've yeah. just been brought into this false belief that zero or low interest rates is the normal, but it's not. I mean, going up to five, six, seven percent is kind of the average. So there's no reason why it actually can't go there. When you look at the T, the the ten year note, I mean, this this is a very strong bull flag pattern, looking like the yields could continue to rally and take off. And I think that's yeah. going to shock a lot of people. And the market is good at doing that. So it's going to do what most people don't expect. And people don't expect, and they definitely don't want, you know, five, five and a half percent interest rates. But the market loves to do things that people don't yeah. want it to do. Yeah. Well, again, again, I just, uh, the impact that would have on uh, bank balance sheets, yep. uh, pension fund balance sheets, uh, insurance company, all these, you know, institutions that own bonds that it one and one and a half percent coupons. Uh, you can pretend that they're okay by saying you're going to hold them to maturity, but we've already saw what happened back in March. So folks need to be aware if rates start to spike again, you just never know what headlines you're going to wake up to the next day. Uh, Chris, if, I'm going to have you do one thing. Just go back that TLT chart, that sure. double bottom that we saw uh, back in, what is that, March um, of this year? That one uh there. Yeah, this was uh, October of 2022. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's October. I'm sorry. I'm getting the other way around. October of last year. What is? What are those levels there so that people know what to watch? That, that's down around $91, $92 a share. So. Okay. There you go. Let's We're in striking distance. We're technically only a day or two away, potentially. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So there's a chart number one for everybody to keep an eye on here in August. And as we even head into September. Uh, Chris, like I said, some things have changed, some haven't as we've gone through uh, the last 30 days. Uh, what have you noticed in, on, in your work? Again, I want to remind everyone, Chris just doesn't follow the precious metals. He's He follows everything, always looking for the best asset and the worst asset now. What are you seeing in those categories? Yeah, so we have seen quite a bit of change since you and I talked about a month ago. And uh, for for example, at the top, this this is my hot list here on the left hand side, and, and the the best assets are near the top. the The ones that are struggling end up down near the bottom. And when you and I talked last, we had almost all the Arc ETFs up near the top. We had the Arc W, we had the Arc Q, the Arc KK. Uh, we even had the um, AI ETF right up at the top. And now they're like halfway down and in, in in the lower quadrant of the list, and they're just. They're just really starting to struggle. If we look at the ARK KK, which is kind of the highest traded one, um, you can see it's it's pulled back pretty sharply, and uh, it it's it's down to the 50-day moving average, which it might find some support here. But we're definitely seeing the leading stocks uh, really take a back seat here. When you last when you and I talked, all these were flying high. Now we're seeing growth stocks, tech stocks, AI um, selling off the most. And we're starting to see some pretty heavy volume over the last several sessions. Actually, if we go back and look at the, the QQQ, for example, and say I just pull up a, a 10 minute chart, uh, the intraday chart shows shows a, a pretty good picture of what's going on with the volume. Um, it's, let me stretch it up a little bit here. 
I don't have the on balance volume on this chart, but the on balance volume tells you if, if shares are being bought or sold and more or less the on balance volume goes from up here and goes all the way down to the lower end, meaning there's a lot of selling going on. We can see these huge bouts of selling at the open, at the closes. Um, we had a, on Friday, we had a huge bout of selling, high volume sell-off. So we're definitely getting some distribution, I think from maybe some big funds, um, he like hedge funds, institutions are maybe lightening their load in these leading stocks. Uh, the NASDAQ is a good barometer of the leading kind of stocks. So that's that's what's really changed. We're seeing the SP500 hold up better. It's performing uh, much nicer over the past couple of weeks, whereas these the tech and the growth stocks are taking a back seat and there's some pretty big selling going on behind the scenes. So we're losing that upward momentum and um, we might start to see this trend reverse. Based on my technicals, we're potentially two, three, four days away from the stock market rally uh, actually giving us a sell signal to go move into a different asset. You can see here, uh, we've had a beautiful rally, but it it is getting to the point here where it needs to find support or else we're actually going to be in a confirmed downtrend. And who knows how far uh, this one could be. It could only be a few more percent. It could be 5, 10, 15% from here. We just have to kind of follow the markets um, using technical analysis and, and go from there. Well, I want to tie that back into what we just discussed on the bond market, Chris. The old man here, uh, 33 years ago when I passed my Series 7 exam, you know, it was like this pendulum, right? If interest rates went up, the stock market typically went down because bonds are thought of as being maybe competition for those investments. Why do I want to fool around with stocks if I can get 5%, you know, in some fixed income investment? Yep. And so, okay, rates are rising and now all of a sudden we could potentially be days away from a sell signal in stocks? Yeah, I mean, that's that's totally the case. In fact, we're actually looking at, uh, depending on when and how the market rolls over here, there's a lot of risk. If you look at the NASDAQ, I mean, it came right up through the heart of this major topping phase we saw in 2021. So it is right up into resistance. It's had this miraculous comeback. Uh, and everybody, you know, as of about two weeks ago was super bullish. Everybody was just yeah. piling in. Um, I think it's, um, let's just take a look. B-O-T-T-Z, I think is the uh, the symbol here for, oh, sorry, B-O-T-Z, bots for the AI ETF. This is kind of the most, most traded mm. one. And mm. actually, if we <laughs> just zoom back, it's interesting because uh, it was fairly light volume. Even though it was high volume for the for the AI space, yeah. suddenly the masses piled in, and we saw this right. huge movement. And this is right where I had a bunch of emails saying, "We got to add the AI to the <laughs> to the hot list. Get in, get in." And of course, from there, it pulled back. It put in a you know a potential double top, and now it is kind of breaking down. Yeah, and it, it could totally unwind. So we're definitely seeing this this phase of you know the herd mentality piles in. This is how it always works. The masses yeah. pile in. Yeah. They buy high, then they bail yeah. out at the lows. It's just the psychology is just yeah. the way the markets work. Um, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how things unfold. But overall, I mean, this market is is definitely struggling. And it's a classic chart, man, that spike, initial top, pullback, and then a kind of a rounded second top of uh, failing momentum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boy, that's an eye opener right there. Uh, yeah. You know what? Maybe August won't be such a boring month after all, Chris. Um, yeah. Things start to break down, catch a lot of people by surprise. I'll remind everybody, we get later in this month, attention will turn to uh, the Jackson hole down, as we call it, where uh, Powell will appear with a whole bunch of other central bankers out in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. That is, uh, let me think here, two weeks from this coming Friday, I believe. And uh, he will discuss monetary policy where he wants to take things going forward that's going to be a big event uh and so who knows how this will all play out as the month continues the last thing we should look at is who else who knows how this will play out as it relates to gold because you know in one case you know one hand you can say well gosh if uh nominal rates are spiking and the stock market's rolling over and gold futures get thrown out with the kitchen sink because they're liquid uh oh we better watch out for some downside but then at the same time you think well uh, if the market starts to break and that means the Fed's going to start cutting rates maybe sooner than expected. Well, then maybe gold goes to the upside. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, there's a couple of fundamental ways it could go. Uh, what do you see in the chart? Yeah. So the chart, the chart has definitely got a, a mixed signal here. 
Uh, obviously, if we if we actually zoom back a little bit more, we've got this potential these this kind of triple triple top pattern, which is a little oh, scary. Really? Every time we've got up here, we've seen some pretty big selling. Uh, the markets, the, the gold market recently has put in, you know, this rounding formation. You could argue it's a mini head and shoulders. There's a neckline mm -hmm. across here. If mm -hmm. gold starts to rally just a little bit more, it could get some traction and go back up to 140, 150 very easily. Uh, the question is, is it going to run out of steam there? Um, you know, also, if we step back and look at this longer pattern, we got a rally up and you could argue this might be a bull flag pattern as well. I think a lot of it's going to come down to what the Fed is doing with the rates. Uh, I think if the rates go up, we're going to see the stock market. I mean, which, as we just showed, the NASDAQ is right at major, major resistance. The stock market will probably sell off. We'll probably see bonds uh, fall even further and break down. Uh, and and gold, I mean, it might find itself as a safe haven play. But typically, when we see mass selling across the board, it, it can pull gold down with it. And um, until they start, I think, slashing rates, uh, I think, uh, you know, gold's going to have a little bit of a, a headwind. You know, it's it's holding up as a defensive play here, but it, it's definitely not leading the market. It's, um, it you know, it's kind of in no man's land. It's up in the upper quadrant of this massive multi-year pattern, kind of in yeah. a resistance zone. And uh, it's trying to hold this level. The question is, is this here going to turn into a bear flag and send it down to the next level around that 1800 1815 area. So it's, you know, it's in that area where I, I just don't want to touch it at this point. I'm waiting for either a massive clean breakout to, to even buy more metals or for a big reset to accumulate more metals. But right now I'd rather focus my money on going somewhere where it's protected and I don't have to worry about it. In fact, it's one of the positions I, I was going to mention earlier is where uh, I've been talking with subscribers is we're looking at going into BIL. It's just the, the one to three month T-bill ETF. You just collect a monthly dividend. You're safely more or less sitting in cash. And when the markets are in this type of condition where they could go either way, it's more, you know, it's a high risk opportunity. Scaling out of positions, moving to cash and just collecting a monthly dividend uh, cash injection into your, your brokerage account is a, a pretty easy play to do. It's easy to, to follow. You don't have to worry about the, the stress and the risk. And when a new opportunity pops up, then we can move from that position into something new. But right now, the markets are a real mix mash. Uh, they're on the verge of, of a big rally or the verge of a big sell-off. And it's just a crapshoot at this phase. So we're in positions. We're still long the stock market. We've scaled out of most of our positions. Um, and we, we might be exiting later this week if the market shows further signs of the trend ending. And if that happens, we could be moving to bill. Uh, the BIL ETF just to safely collect interest uh, in the markets, uh, interest while the markets are kind of figuring out where the next opportunity is. Well, and as you know, Chris, uh, it's great to make money on the upside, but the key to wealth accumulation is to avoid losing money and the big setbacks. I know that's a big part of uh, what you do at the technical traders. Tell everybody how people can contact you. Yeah, sure. If uh, if you want to follow what I'm doing at the thetechnicaltraders.com and I do kind of a morning re video report, just like you and I are doing now, a little more in depth. I show some intraday charts. We go through all the different sectors and asset classes and uh, whatever, whenever I put a trade on, I share those trades with you, have multiple different strategies spread out over different timeframes. And uh, the whole strategy we base, base it on is around asset revesting, which is a term that I kind of coined to kind of name this style of investing. It's, it's like a trading and investing. It's not passive investing, but it's not active trading. It's right in between. And so I wanted to uh, kind of name it so that people understand what it is. And the whole key is, is we're only in an asset when it's going up. And we're usually only in one asset class at a time. And if uh, nothing is a safe opportunity, we'll move to cash, like a BIL position, and just continue to, to collect interest until there is a, an opportunity. And everything I trade is based around ETFs. And so you can follow my, my signals uh, at thetechnicaltraders.com. Perfect. You know, and I guess we tie that back into gold too. Uh, with mm -hmm. that kind of mixed picture, good time to adore the shiny metal that you do own because it's doing its job. But also, if you do get a pullback, it's a good time to have some dry powder. And I'll just remind everybody that Sprott Money uh, Bullion Summer Sale continues through the 25th of this month. 
keep an eye on prices, get a little pullback. You might be able to deploy some of that dry powder and add to your stack. Chris, thank you so much for your time. It's always insightful to visit with you. And gosh, I'm sure curious to see where we are by the time we get to early September. No kidding. Yep. Sounds good, Craig. All right. We'll take care. And thanks everybody for watching. We'll have more content here on all of the Sprott Money channels for you later on here this month.